Hey, good morning, everyone. Marty Missouri here. Tuesday morning, the 27th of February, 2024, with a very quick midweek analysis for you. My schedule the next couple days pretty much demands that I just get right to the point for you here this morning. Clients, this will show up attached to an email tomorrow as Wednesday's message. I'm going to uh, just start with a couple of uh, quotes and statistics and then jump right into the charts. First of all, this chart, I can't recall who posted it, but I copied and pasted it. Apparently, as we sit here today, the top 10% of stocks by size versus the entire U.S. market has reached a point that we haven't seen since all the way back in 1929. And the last time we came close was just before the tech bubble burst. So folks, this is just another one of those charts having to do with valuation, having to do really with concentration, lack of breadth and so forth uh, that has our attention. Does it mean that we're going to get, you know, similar results? No. Does it mean that the risk of getting similar results or seeing similar action is high? Yes, of course it does. So when you look at charts like this and you see how unusual it is, then you look for historical analogs and you consider what happened thereafter. No way, shape or form means it has to play out that way. I'll say it again. It just means that risk is elevated right here. And with that in mind, reading uh, the latest from John Hussman. John is a hugely well-respected analyst, money manager, philanthropist, been around a long time, was very present in his calls prior to the tech bubble and the mortgage bubble or the great financial crisis. This is what he said in a message he posted yesterday. As I say here, this will sound very familiar. This is something you hear me saying over and over and over again. We can't say with any certainty that all stocks are at a market peak. We can also say with complete certainty that present conditions mirror what a peak looks like. This is what markets look like when they're toppy or when they're topping. This is what the fundamentals look like when the market's about to enter a rough patch. We can't know the future, but it's straightforward to examine history and do math. Presently, market conditions have a stronger correlation, positive correlation, with historical peaks and a stronger negative correlation with historical market lows than 99.9% .9 of instances across history. So what you always hear me saying is that, folks, this is not typically what things look like when the market's about ready to take off into new bull market territory. Hence, we remain very well diversified, properly hedged, we think, and pretty liquid right here. And then lastly, before I get to the chart, sentiment, just an update on that. It's just dangerously high, historically speaking, and I've shown you a lot of history on this over the years. There's the big gap still between the bulls and the bears. You can see the bulls coming back a little bit, and we've had this amazingly resilient market so far. Investor intelligence, the bull bear spread is firmly in the danger territory, and the Citigroup Fear Greed Index is in the extreme greed category by a couple of notches. Something else, at least on a short-term basis, to be thinking about as we allocate assets or think about thinking about allocating new money. Probably not something we want to do in size right here. As for the technicals, S&P 500 daily chart, we've got uh, this, this very definite uh, uptrend here. Hit it a few times, coming off of the top end of the range that we have identified here, and we have a just a just a slight sell signal on the MACD, and we have those bearish divergences on the daily for the Nasdaq 100 or the ETF that tracks it, testing that support, breaking down below it a little bit as I speak at you right here. We break that impulsively and with momentum, and I think it gets ugly. Bearish divergences on the momentum indicators, not a good looking setup, very heavy looking market. Russell 2000 chart all over the place, still once again testing this 50% Fibonacci retracement level. That's been where rallies have gone to die, at least this one here. Um, negative divergences on the Russell, not as constructive here as I was a week or two ago. 
And then as for yields, the uh, 10 year been bouncing right off of that 435 ish level. Looks like we pretty much have an, a bear engulfing candle. That's when one big candle, at least the body of it, engulfs previous candles. So maybe not count that one. Three or four days that are engulfed there. That's typically bearish. You can see we broke below this ascending triangle. We'll see how that plays out. Yields coming down would actually be net bullish for stocks. Um, we do have PCE inflation data coming out this week. Looks like it could be hot like CPI. I heard a commentator say it's priced in. I honestly don't think so. I think if it comes in hot, stocks are going to suffer and you're going to see yields probably break to the upside. The dollar continues in this downward wedge pattern would typically be bullish, but we don't have any kind of bullish signals from the momentum. We'll see how that plays out if we do get a hot PCE print and yields pop, I suspect the dollar would pop with yields. And uh, so folks, that's pretty much it. Nothing at all new on the t in terms of the technicals. Uh, they look concerning to me. It's a kind of setup that could get ugly, but you know, we watched Nvidia blow right through those technicals last week and kept the market buoyant like it did. Uh, at, at a point or two last year as well. So don't know that that's going to hold up. The underlying dynamics are a bit different. The state of the consumer is beginning to look a little shaky to us right here. The recession outlook for the second half of this year, first part of next year is still on, if you will, still on the table, if you will. As I've shown you lately, particularly in the manufacturing space, we've seen some pockets of strength. Uh, folks, it's going to be a volatile year. I think that is one thing I can say with certainty. And with certainty, I can say that these are not charts that make me real comfortable about the near-term outlook for stocks, but we're open to all possibilities. And always keep in mind, not giving advice here. Uh, this is mostly for clients, those of you who watch these videos before you make any moves or you start thinking about anything that might come to mind as a result of these videos. See your advisor and or do your own research. Folks, thank you as always for watching and listening. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.